Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Now this morning I'm looking at the Red Book again. Um, I've reviewed it um, every so often, every few years a new edition comes along and I review it for... Originally it was for Jordan Publishing as part of their Family Law imprint. It's now come to us from um, LexisNexis. It's still part of the Family Law imprint of works, but this is the top title. There's no question in my mind, or that of anybody else, that the Family Court Practice 2017, now its 25th anniversary edition, is a most fundamental work that everybody must know about, must know how to use, and will have if they practice in this division. Now, the editor-in-chief is Lord Wilson of Culworth, as, as usual. He's come up with a splendid new edition. The general editor is his honour judge, Anthony Cleary, and the consulting editor, Lady Justice Black. Now, of course, there are a large number of people involved as contributors as well. Um, the work, of course, is, as I say, of, of um, there are different words you can use for it, but it is the most important. So I've given it the title, the most important single work in family law, now celebrating its 25th anniversary, and that is The Red Book. Now, let's have a look at it first of all. Elizabeth wrote most of this review, but I've added quite a bit to it as well. There's the front of it, and then there's the spine. You can see all the people involved, nothing on the back. But you can see from it, there's the shaded areas, which makes it quite easy to find. And then there are some very useful dividers here, there and everywhere. And in fact, I've been using it recently for a particular matter. So it's all, all right in the middle on a domestic violence issue. Now let's just have a look at the back of the book. You can see in the inside back cover there's information on fees. In the front, um, it's the diary itself. And if we go to the index at the back, first of all, remember it's 3,000 odd pages, so it's a very important book. Three, in fact, 2,982 pages of actual print, plus, of course, bits at the front, so it's to 3,000. Now, what you've got in the index is page numbering. You can see that there. You can see how detailed the index is, very detailed indeed. And then, of course, right at the back, you've got European material. If you go to the front, I don't know if you've used the book before, but if you haven't, and this is new for you, I'm hoping this, this review will help you, because knowing your way around this book is very important. It's the same with the white book. There's the front page, the first major front page of it. Now, after that, you've got all of the detail about the book there on that side. And then these are the people who contributed to it. You can see that the papers are very thin, the page is very thin. Uh, you've then got the original preface from Mrs Justice Bracewell uh, of February 20, 2001. And then you've got the foreword, uh, which is actually dated February 27th from Nicholas Wilson. That's Lord Wilson. He makes some very interesting points, which we will talk about. This is the word bonfire at some stage, which I'll come on to. And then there's an introduction from, from Cleary. Um, again, uh, this is actually from March 2017. Then you've got the, the contents section. You've got a general summary of contents, and then it goes all the way through. I'm not going to run all the way through with this because it's, uh, it's a heavy book to hold. But you'll see the, f the six main parts are listed there, with the index at the back. And then there's um, what you do have, of course, are you've got the statutes, the statutory instruments, tables of cases, practice directions and so on. Then you go straight in after abbreviations to the part, page one, procedural guides, page uh, part two, sorry, not part one, page one, part one, procedural guides, part two, statutes, part three, procedural rules, part four, statutory instruments, part five, practice guidance, and part six, uh, European materials and you can see how it's structured and if we go into the center it this bit is very important this is the family court practice this is actually the children act itself 1989 as and of course the one thing you've got which I will mention again is after you've got the statutes and the section numbers you've got the commentary and that's absolutely fundamental to assist and in fact with anything you're dealing with uh, when you've got the for instance, the family procedural rules, I'm, I'm, I've got that open in the middle. Um, you've then got the basic rules and then 
after you've got the rules, you've then got the little notes to go with it at the bottom. It's a bit difficult to probably see that, but that's the beauty of this and other works. And this is where the law and how you do your cases is where it's to be found. And as I've said, if you practice in this area, it is very important to know how to use the book. You know about it and know how to use it. Because I have been in court on many occasions where something has happened and the first thing that the judge is going to do is he's going to go to that book to check, especially if it's something like a financial argument. Uh, it may be not so much with things like child arrangement orders, but certainly financial disposal arrangements. It's always useful to check and make absolutely certain we know what we're doing because obviously you don't want to go on appeal if you can avoid it, <laughs> naturally. So why do we say this is the single most important work in family law as the Red Book? Well, this, this is it. If you are a family law practitioner confronted with the venom, vituperation, confusion, controversy and heartache that all too often emanates from family law disputes, you'll need urgently the evergreen, ever authoritative, ever reliable Red Book by your side to assist you in your travail. We refer, of course, to the Family Court Practice 2017. Up to date and fresh off the press from LexisNexis for its 25th anniversary issue. Its editorial uh, team is truly top draw, heading the team of some 13 expert contributors, mainly members of the judiciary, are the three distinguished editors who include the uh, the Justice of the Supreme Court, um, Nicholas Wilson, that's Lord Wilson of Culworth, His Honour Judge Anthony Cleary and Lady Justice Black. The end result has become almost universally regarded now throughout its 25-year history of annual publication as the Bible of family law. Definitely uh, and definitively the family law advocate's friend. It's reputed to be found positioned in front of every family law judge in every family law court. And I think that probably is the case because if you're making any decisions, you're going to need some access to this publication if, if there is an issue or a particular procedural legal point which needs further examination. Now, the beauty and utility of this book from LexisNexis lies with the detailed and directly useful commentaries which follow the procedural rules and statutes uh, contained in the relevant sections uh, throughout, explaining what they mean and elaborating further with authorities, including um, case law. And I have found that very helpful. It's also useful in opinion writing if you're trying to give some indication of, of what direction a case is partic going in. Um, particularly going in. Now, the precision and thoroughness of this feature make the Red Book a real time saver for advocates and judges alike. Readers, of course, will realise, however, that they must familiarise themselves uh, with the best ways to use this volume of more than 3,000 pages. Fortunately, with a logically structured work of reference of this size, the getting used to process is quite straightforward. You can pick it up quite easily. It's quite similar in many ways to uh, what is behind it, the, the, the white book, and of course the green book as well. But I mean, in, in terms of, of, of the way it's structured, you get used to it quite quickly. But as there are very many unrepresented parties now in family law proceedings, uh, you may be looking at this video and be unrepresented, a litigant in person, where you will need to know a little bit about how to use this book and it, it, it should be available in uh, the public reference libraries as well. Um, there's an extensive uh, index, of course, in the book right at the back, which is very much the standard form index that they use. And there's also a contents summary and a detailed list of contents, which informs you, as I've indicated earlier, that the book is split into six parts, followed by five tables, namely tables of statutes, statutory instruments, cases and practice directions, together with the CPR itself, FPR and the Supreme Court practice directions themselves. Now the six parts or sections of the book provide all of the basic information. It's the chunk of the book itself. That's the procedural guides, uh, statutes, procedural rules, statutory instruments and practice guidance. And as I've indicated, 
part six covers European material and it's impossible to forget that we're not yet in the post-European Union world quite yet. And I think it's important to bear in mind the, um, the fact that the European element is going to be with us for a long time, whatever happens with uh, the way in which we exit the uh, European Union. Speaking of which, it's worth quoting General Editor Anthony Cleary's comments on Brexit, which I think are, are, are pertinent now. Quote, Contrary to some public opinion, he remarks in the foreword, European jurisprudence is not confined to sovereignty or to the curvature of bananas. It has been gently woven into UK statute and case law. If we are to throw out the bathwater, we must take great care to observe what might go with it, let alone what might replace it. As yet, one might be forgiven for the impression that family lawyers are getting on with the business of representing and protecting the most vulnerable in our society and have little time, let alone the appetite, for looking into the unknown. Well, I mean, that's true in it, as far as it comes. But I think all of us have to bear in mind trends and the way in which things are... Um, basically, events are taking up and catching up with us. Brexit is on its way. I'm recording this in the middle of 2017, after a general election. We are looking at the moment at, at a quite a quick timetable to quit the EU and all of the things that are going to go with that, including possible changes in the longer term to the way we do our business. Whether that will affect the corporate substantive law um, in terms of family law, I don't know. I doubt it very much. And it will be a very long process. Let me conclude by saying confronting the challenge of representing and protecting society's most vulnerable, the truly professional family lawyer, in our view, will inevitably want to acquire the, uh, the Red Book in its latest edition. It's perfectly fair to refer to this convenient single volume as the most authoritative statement on family law and therefore indispensable to the efficient and informed practitioner. And I'd like to add one thing and that is that this is up to date. The publication date is cited at the 29th of May, round about the end of May 2017 and I'm reviewing this a couple of weeks later, it's only just come in. There are new things in this edition for 2017 which weren't in the previous edition. And you've got to keep up to date, as I have found out, if you've got the previous edition rather than 2017, you won't have certain things like, for instance, uh, uh, the uh, guidance on uh, Family Procedure Rule 12J on domestic violence, which is going to change again. That's just one example. Um, but here on this particular and, and fact finding it for uh, in general for uh, child contact orders or child arrangement orders. The reason I mention that is that if you use an old edition, it's going to be out of date. It's the same with the white book, which is behind it. If you use an old edition, uh, you've got to be aware that the numbers are different, the page numbers are different, and things will be different if depending on what you're doing in court. It's caught me out where a new edition has come. They've all got the brand new edition. I'm still using the previous edition because that new one hasn't yet come. So do bear that in mind. With that, I would like to thank everybody involved in the red book here it is again front there's the side all these names many of these people will be known to you um, but they are they are very important people very learned in the law and people who we do rely on here they all are mentioned there as I say I've been in front of quite a few of them very important people um, and I do think they are giving us a most magnificent service with this I'm so grateful to Lexis Nexis for taking over the family law imprint and still publishing the book. Because we can't do our work without this. This is the fundamental publication. And without it, uh, we really would have trouble. So a big thank you to everybody concerned. And once again, I'm most grateful that it's, it's here for us to use. Bye-bye.